So now let's talk a little bit about once you have a topic model, how do you know whether it's a good topic model or not? Traditionally, because these are probabilistic models, you can use held out likelihood to evaluate how good your model is. So the way this works is you have some data and you fit some number of models and you want to compare those models. The standard approach from statistics to compare these models is to have some other data, what's called held out data, that you can apply your models to and because these are probabilistic models you can ask here's some new data you, you haven't seen before how likely do you think this new data is? And so from each of these you can get some number that characterizes how good of a model you had. And so the higher the held out likelihood the better. And the traditional approach would say take whichever number is the highest and that model is your winner. There are some important implementation issues about how you actually compute the held out likelihood, but this is very straightforward. Why isn't this a good idea is what we'll talk about next. So let's remember what a topic model does and why people use topic models. When you run a topic model, you get topics out of it. And these topics allow you to tell a story. So for example, here are three topics from a decade's worth of the New York Times, one about technology, one about business, and one about the arts. By looking at these, you can figure out that these are three of the most important things talked about in the New York Times, and if you're interested in one of these things, you can look at the documents associated with that and get a better idea of what the New York Times had to say about, say, the arts. If you use topic models, this is what you're looking at. You're not doing word prediction, unlike, say, a language model or an autocomplete model. This is what you're actually looking at. And we should try to evaluate whether these make sense and tell a good story or not. So one way of doing that is you can do what's called a word intrusion test, where you take some topic and then you find another word and you stick it in there. And you then ask if people can find the word that doesn't belong. And if people can find the word that doesn't belong, then the original topic made sense. If they can't find the word that doesn't belong, then the original topic didn't make sense because this random word that you stuck in that doesn't belong in this topic looks as good as the words that were there before. So if you do this, you can find what are good topics and what are bad topics. And so, for example, this artist exhibition gallery topic looks pretty good. But as you go further and further over, you're not finding the intruder word correctly. People are actually clicking on words that the model thought were part of the topic, and that suggests that the model wasn't very good to begin with. And what's surprising is now that we've talked about two different ways of measuring how good a topic model is, you can actually plot the old way of measuring a topic model against this measure of whether the topic makes sense, and they're actually negatively correlated. And this is actually pretty surprising because everyone was using this old statistical technique to measure how good a topic model was. But what was actually happening is that once you got beyond a certain threshold of uh, an actual topic model that made some amount of sense, the topic models were getting more and more complicated. They were getting confusing to humans and not necessarily doing a good job of telling a story about what's going on inside the data set. So the moral of the story is that you should measure what you care about. And if you're using a topic model, oftentimes you're using the topic model to tell a story to a human. And if that's what you're using a topic model for, you should make sure that you're actually measuring whether it makes sense to a human or not. And if you're doing that, you shouldn't measure something like held out likelihood, which only measures the complexity of the model and measures something that topic models aren't actually used for. In other cases, you're using the topic model for some other task. Maybe you're doing machine translation or you're doing sentiment analysis. If that's the task that you care about, then you should measure the performance on that. In any event, the moral of the story is still the same. You should measure what you care about. If you care about the ability of a model to predict a word, then by all means measure held out likelihood. If you care about the ability of your model to tell a story, then you should measure that directly by measuring how interpretable your model is, how much a human can make sense of your model. If you're interested in some other task, you should measure the performance of your model 
on that task.